You're, you're, <laughs> the pressure already. is on. Clayton's yeah, yeah. in trying a to rush, make it... and we're trying to get this done. Don't blame me. I'm not in a rush. Oh, you're not? Okay. No, not at all. Um, we, I think we mentioned before that we're going to try to do a video every week. We missed last week. We have a bunch of stuff going on at the shop, renos. Obviously, this all is new. From the, Lots of stuff is going on in preparations for some new equipment coming. So bear with us. We're putting a video out this week. Um, and we're going to continue to try to put out, we're going to try to make up for last week's, but it will probably take a week or two before we get to that. Um, but this video, as the title says, oh, actually, before we get into that, Clayton, let's talk about, people have been asking about 2.5 Turbo Kit. I do really hope to have an update on that by the end of the month or maybe the first week into April. Mm, you, said in the last, you said in the last video, man, end of the month. I know, I know, but there's so much going on here, Clayton. You did um, nothing this last week, so you Two had weeks of in a row. Yeah. Um, so the 2.5 kit's definitely coming. We have my engine apart, swapping over the crank to the forge crank and all that stuff, the blocks all freshened up. You'll see a bunch of this stuff. Had it, had it, gave it a little haircut. It's, it's, it's coming together. We'll have more talk on the 2.5 kit coming up soon. So bear with us, please. There was one other thing I wanted to... Oh, I mentioned the new equipment, the Renos. I mentioned this. Non-sponsored, by the way, all this None stuff. None of this yeah. stuff. It's just out of pocket. Yeah, out of my pocket. Say, it's all out of my pocket. I'm, I'm the sponsor. Right? Okay. So the point of this... You started recording again, right? Oh, yeah, beep. Um, the point of this video is... Specifically, I mean, I, the title says 1AT owners. This really goes for anyone building a, you know, four-cylinder, five-cylinder, six-cylinder engine nowadays. We do post lots of cool builds and that make really good horsepower. But you guys got to be realistic on what you're trying to accomplish. Building a six, 700 horsepower front wheel drive street car that is going to run uh, 195 series tires, like it's just not a practical thing. So for race application, stuff like that, or if it's all wheel drive, that's a totally different scenario. But even still, I get phone calls about 180s, as you guys would probably imagine, multiple times a day. And some of the inquiries I get are just so astronomical, out of this world. Like, like way out there. Way out of this world. So the point kind of of the video is to get have realistic goals when you approach your project. There's lots of people on YouTube making big horsepower cars and stuff like that. And in a lot of cases, what you're seeing on there, much like the drag car, much like that car, they have a purpose. And that purpose justifies, in a lot of cases, the power that they want to make. If you call me and you say, you, what's the highest horsepower 1AT record? And you, your reply is like, basically, I want to beat that. And then I ask, Okay, you want to make 1,300 wheel horsepower or something like that. What's the car being used for? And you tell me it's a street car and it's a Mark IV GTI. All I can really do is laugh deep down inside <laughs> because it's just not a practical thing. So get, if you're, you know, have big aspirations and stuff like that, that's great. But understand, especially in a front wheel drive car, there's only so much power you're going to be able to put down. If it's a specific purpose built track car, whether it's a road course car or a drag car or something like that, then the chassis and the weight balance and the suspension, all of those things contribute to help putting that power down. But a 1300 wheel horsepower street Mark IV 1AT, come on come on get with the program <laughs> and even if you wanted to race that and street drive it and do this and do that you got to kind of pick 
a couple of top things you kind of want out of the car, or at least have the realistic expectations of it may not be the best street car, but can I drive to the track still? Yes. Will it be the better track car or street car? Yes. So on? Yeah. So it's and the, it's, a, it's a tough battle. We all a, dealt with it. It's a tough battle. The thing is, is that we're talking about a small displacement engine, and to make good power on them, it requires large turbos to do so especially with pump gas like you call me and you say you want to make 800 horsepower and you want to do it on 93 octane well again completely unrealistic goals things to add to that about um for 1at stuff in like specifically to make five what's the problem i'm just seeing how much you're dying right okay now. uh 1.6 horsepower i doubt it um, for 1AT specifically, you, once you get about the 700 wheel horsepower range, this is a conversation I have with a lot of people that call, once you get to about the 700 wheel horsepower range, a lot of off the shelf parts become not good enough anymore. And that's where the price of building these things gets exponentially higher. A lot of off-the-shelf parts we can use, pistons, rods, stuff like that, valve train, a lot of that, head studs, a lot of that stuff to get up to around 700 horsepower, a little bit higher than that, but is, is pretty easily done. When you start making 800 to 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 horsepower, that's not your average setup anymore, and the price goes way, way, way up. Like... Head studs, for example, you're talking $150 head studs to potentially seven, $800 head studs. It's just things get exponentially more expensive. So the best thing to do when you're building a 1AT or any 2 liter VR, whatever, 2.5, is set realistic goals based on the fuel you plan on using. Um, and what the vehicle is going to be used for. Again, front wheel drive cars, typically 400 wheel horsepower is really what you're going to get out of it on the street. After that, if you're looking at all wheel drive or um, a rear wheel drive car, maybe it's an Audi that's been converted for drifting or something like that, all those things kind of play into factor. And then the fuel itself, again, I get guys that call me and they're like, I want to make six, 700 wheel horsepower on a 1AT on pump gas. It's just you're not going to be able to do it with the requirements. Maybe ethanol, yes. Ethanol is a different story, but that's not pump gas for everybody. Um, so have realistic goals. What, what was the title of the video, Clayton? What did I say? I don't know. What I think it was either going to be uh, 118 owners WTF or 118 owners you know, have realistic goals. That's kind of the point of this. Check yourself. Check yourself, yeah. It, the internet makes it seem like it's a really great thing to have a 600 horsepower 1AT and in some cases there's a purpose for sure but for the average person get out and drive a 400 wheel horsepower front wheel drive car and you'll really see what I'm talking about stop worrying about the internet stop worrying about YouTube videos and what this guy's <laughs> oh, making oh by the way like subscribe yeah like subscribe <laughs> stop worrying about all the other things and have realistic goals for the fuel you're running for the application that you're using the car for and your budget because that's again once you start getting up there in power it starts costing a lot more money clayton i don't want to ramble too much more i've done a lot what are we missing what do you want to add to this thing i got nothing to add, man just, you got nothing no, i ran i ranted enough modifying cars just a slippery slope we've all been through it you know ruining cars that were extremely fun to drive to making them either not street legal or too much power or just not the right application for what you want to do and it just it's nice to think it out um, yeah and try to have an end game plan and trust me none of us really are, yeah it's are good at that but. yeah it's it's so easy to have really high goals but in the end it like for my 2.5 for example like really the car's probably going to make if i had to guess between six and seven hundred wheel I'm probably going to swap that turbo out for something smaller to make a good five to 600 wheel horsepower pump gas car. That's hopefully what I plan on doing. But again, it's all wheel drive. There's a purpose, take customers out in it, stuff like that. There'll be- There's a purpose going back and forth to work. Yeah, going, going to, to Tim work. Hortons. It's my daily, yeah, that's exactly. Go to, going to Tim's. So 
If you guys have any questions or comments about that, about this video, I know it's a little bit of a weird title, but I just needed to have this conversation. I get so many calls about 180s, and the, the goals some people have is, I mean, it is unbelievable, Clayton. Like, literally, like, what's the highest horsepower? Okay, I wanna make, I wanna make 100 more horsepower than that. And what's the purpose? It's a street car. <laughs> okay, you want 1300 wheel, front wheel drive, Mark IV, no, no, not happening. Like, subscribe, see you in the next video. Thanks for following along. Bye. Bye.